Hello, so I am. Uh, I did a live video last night, I had a great time, absolutely loved it. Can't believe so many people watched it, but had a great time. Anyway, this, this is not about the journey as such of Peter Rabbit, which is why it's not in the title. Um, if, you're, if you're specifically watching the videos for that, then uh, this is not that. This one is, um, we have issues with the Mint as a business. We have issues with the Mint personally as a business, but we also have the issues with the Mint on behalf of coin collectors uh, nationwide. And, um, and so this is, uh, this is a video explaining that. Now I had, a, uh, I know, I had a, an email from somebody, this is what's prompt me to, prompted me to do this. I had an email from somebody yesterday that I really, really, really want to help do and put some coins out. And uh, I won't say who it is, but, but that person said to me, the first paragraph was how fantastic they thought the idea was. They loved it. They absolutely loved the idea. They think it's fantastic. And on behalf of Coin Collectors Nationwide, they think it's a fantastic idea. The second paragraph was to say, but I've got to decline your invitation to, to be one of the people putting these out because I'm not too comfortable about uh, what's going on with your issues with the Mint. Um, so that's uh, given me some cause, for con some cause for thought and consideration, really. And, um, and here's the thing, you can't really have one without the other. I'm not a benevolent person that's just decided to come along and go, okay, I'm just gonna do this. It's because of the problems that we've had with the Mint, it's because of the embroils and one thing and another that, uh, that we've ended up in the position of going, okay, you know, we're not getting anywhere in that area, so what we're gonna do is, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna publicize the farce of it all so that somebody takes notice and somebody of importance, somebody important enough that can actually do something about it, can take notice and go, yeah, absolutely, that, that's not right, and, and does something about it. So that's the, that's, the, that's the essence of what it's about. So as I say, we have a list of gripes. Some seriously rebound onto the uh, coin collecting community. Um, so let's take one, let's take distributorship. The Royal Mint, in conjunction with Change Checker, have Change Checker advertised as an official Royal Mint distributor. But by the definition of the word distributor, they're not distributors. You see, you have some separate entities. You have, generally speaking, this is generally speaking, and this really works. It doesn't matter whether it, you're selling potatoes or coins or whatever it is. There is a certain, there are certain rules to business, that sort of rules to business, we call it that, that ways of business that just are. They just are, you know? And, and one way is this. You have a manufacturer that manufactures goods. That manufacturer generally doesn't have the time, etc., to to wholesale those goods. So they will set up what's called a distributor. And a distributor will then deal with all of that, selling and getting rid of the goods and so on and finding customers. They deal with that on behalf of the manufacturer. And they deal with that at a price that is either nearly the same as or a little bit dearer than the manufacturing price because their primary role as a distributor is not to make a profit. Their primary role as a distributor is to distribute to the people it distributes. Now, a distributor, under the, under the, if you like, the rules and the etiquette, the unwritten rules of business, the etiquette of business, dating back generations. This is not something I'm trying to put in place. This is, this is etiquette that goes back generations, okay? You have a manufacturer, you have a distributor. The distributor sells to wholesalers and retailers and those wholesalers might sell to other retailers and the retailers that buy from them sell to the public and so on. So it goes down a chain. That's how it works. Okay? It goes down this chain, starts off at the manufacturing level and the item finishes up in the public level. Part of the etiquette that's gone on for generations and generations and generations within the com commercial industry, if you like, commerce, is that what you don't do, what you never, ever, ever do, is have the manufacturer 
or the distributor retailing at a cheaper price than the retailers that buy from them. And the reason that you don't have that, and it's against all etiquette, is because as a manufacturer, you can undercut everybody. So it's wrong. So as a manufacturer, what you should do is you should sell that item at the absolute full retail price as a manufacturer. Even though they're manufacturing it, it should be retailed at the full retail price. No offers, no sale, no this, no that, no cheapy, cheapy, dealy, dealies. It should be offered at the full retail price. Because then the retailers can also sell at the full retail price and can, if they want to, have little deals that make it possible to undercut the manufacturer's retail price. Because in a proper scenario, the manufacturer doesn't want all the business. If the manufacturer wants all of the business, then why on earth is he bothering to even retail out to people like me and dealers like me all over the world? If you want all of the business, then take all of the business. Don't allow, don't let it be sold. But don't, don't make the item and then retail the item cheaper than the people that are retailing your product. Because these people that are retailing your product, they're investing tens and tens, hundreds of thousands, between them all, hundreds of thousands, millions of pounds, they're investing in this product to retail it. So the last thing these people need is the manufacturer then going, yeah, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna retail it myself and I'm gonna undercut all you that are buying it off me. That is against all etiquette of business. Don't care what anybody says, that is against all etiquette of business that's been there for generations. A distributor or a manufacturer never retails the product. And, they, and if they do, on the odd occasions that they do, they retail it at the full retail price to give all the people that are buying the product under them a chance, proper chance. You don't, you don't wholesale your product out to people and then retail the product cheaper than these people that have bought it off you can possibly retail it for. It just, it's, it's just greed, it's, just, it's, it's disgusting, it is the wrong way to do business. So that, I hope in layman's terms, covers where we start from. So we start from a problem that, that is this system, this manufacturing system. And the first problem in that system, in that chain, is that the, instead of it all being running nice and smoothly, the manufacturer decides they want to be greedy. And so they want to retail the product cheaper than the people that are buying it off. So then we get into this distributorship. So a distributor is, a, as I've explained, the person that buys on behalf of the manufacturer and sells to other people, right? That's the definition of a distributor. The Royal Mint play on the terminology of words. And so they call change checker distributors because they distribute. But if you look up under the Oxford English Dictionary, the, the definition of the word distributor, the definition of the word distributor, quite simply, is exactly what I've said it is. So, and they are not it. Change checker are not distributors. They will not wholesale to anybody. They say they're not geared up for it, but that's untrue because, you know, I've already proved that's wrong because I've gone along and I've bought 5,000 of a product off them and they managed to pack it and they managed to ship it. So to say that you can't do it is, I don't understand that, you know. They say, and, and so many dealers have come forward to me lately to, uh, to talk to me about this because they're all told the same thing. Oh, we can't buy off Change Checker because Change Checker say they're not geared up for doing wholesale. Yeah, they're geared up for it. Of course they're geared up for it. It doesn't make any difference if someone comes along and buys one item at 2 99 postage or someone comes along and buys 1,000 items. It makes no difference. It's a bit of extra packaging. You might have to find a bigger box and it's a bit more postage, but bloody hell, You've just sold a thousand products, so you've made a lot more money. You see? But the whole problem with that, and the reason all of that blows up and causes so many little tiny cottage industry dealers a lot of problems, is because Change Checker themselves refuse, won't, don't want to sell wholesale. They're quite happy to stay in the monopoly that, they, that there is with the Royal Mint, which I'll come to in a bit. So what we're left with there is we have this absolute farce of 
the terminology of the Change Checker website saying that we are official Royal Mint distributors when actually they're not. They're not distributors. Under any, under any definition of the word distributor, they are not distributors. So that, so we've now dealt with layman's terms, the chain, manufacturer, da 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 da, and the problem with that, well, the issue I've got with that, and also we've now dealt with the word distributor. Even though, even though we tried to, and all we wanted to do was stock their product, by the way. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't want any of this, I didn't ask for any of this, I just approached them and said, we want to stock your product, how do we do that? And they put us through a year-long um, application process that actually was a complete and utter load of rubbish. They put us through a year-long application process to be a distributor, and we failed. Then after two years, two years, they write us a letter and tell us, in their view, anybody that buys their product and resells it to their own database is a distributor. That's what they say. Anybody that buys their product, retails it to their own database, is a distributor. So for a whole year, I've been put through this process to become, and I'm not the only person, there's, there's quite a few people out there that have gone through this. I, I know one person I was talking to yesterday, three years this has been going on for him uh, and his business. Put you through the, the application process for a year, deny you to become a distributor, then a year after that, calmly off the cuff saying right in that anybody that buys their product, sells it to their own customers, is a distributor. So the whole, the whole, it's just a farce over them deciding what the meaning is of a word at the time they happen to be writing a letter, or even several times in one letter. So that's that side of it, right? I'm hoping you get that side of it. So there is no UK distributor. And this is the bit that I've been fighting for for two years, and this is the first bit I can honestly, I can say to you now, it seems that this is the first bit that we've achieved. Because for two years, the Royal Mint, even though they promised in the beginning to give us access to one of a dozen UK distributors, they forced us, unceremoniously, to buy off of somebody in the Netherlands. And that's where we have to buy our product. Carbon footprint is a joke. Our order goes over the, over, the, over the email to the Netherlands. The Netherlands then order it from the Royal Mint. The Royal Mint package it, send it over to the Netherlands where they unbox it, they repackage it. They send it over to me in England. And then if I've sold that uh, one of those coins to somebody in Australia, then that coin is going to get on a third plane and go over to Australia. And the carbon footprint on that is absolutely massive. Cannot be, cannot be uh, denied. And so, uh, again, a, a problem that I have with that is the change checker, which are only 30 miles down the road from me, they will get a delivery the next day or the same day. They will have a delivery. They will have a coin on sale the day it goes on release. How can they have that coin on sale the day it goes on release unless they've been delivered it the day before it goes on release or they've magically got same day delivery and they've delivered it by courier on the day of release? Otherwise, how can they sell it on the day of release? They can't. The likes of me and people like me that have to go over and buy from the MNI in the Netherlands, what that means is it gives Change Checker a two week head start and 288 group. Gives them all a two week head start on the product, Westminster. Gives them two weeks head start on the product because they can now have that product in stock and ship it out to the customers a full two weeks sometimes, uh, sometimes even longer, before we can even get it. The rest of us little little cottage industry, little business people can get hold of it. I don't think that's right. I think that's wrong. I think that's wrong. I don't like it on my behalf and I'm um, a pretty fair guy, so I don't like it on other dealers' behalf. I would rather help a dealer than try and obstruct a dealer. Somebody else that's in the business, whether they're another coin tuber, whether they're another, they're another business selling coins, I don't take the view, oh, competitor, oh, we've got to get them out. I don't take any of that view. I take the view that like, there is so much business out there. Competition is healthy, it's good means people sell cheaper than me, it means they get business, I don't get all the business, you know. 
it's the way it should be. It's what democracy and fair trade and all these things are about. And all of a sudden you can't do that. Not in this business. In this business, it's all secret and behind the scenes and one thing and another. So, that's that bit. Right? So hopefully you've got that bit and I've explained that right in layman's terms. So, because of these issues, I've had various communications with the Royal Mint. And unfortunately, when a mistake has been made, they didn't acknowledge that mistake but they rather glossed over that mistake and, and told fibbers. I mean, I keep saying fibbers because I hate to use the word lies. Lies is so aggressive. Um, but they did, and they kept putting this stuff in writing. Um, one of the simple little lies that they told was that they gave us a list of distributors to choose from, and we freely chose from that list, and we chose MNI, and therefore they can't be responsible for where we go to buy our coins. Now... If there was any more than one single solitary company on that list, you could probably say that. You could say, well, we've got no control over where you buy. We give you a list. You went and chose off, you chose off that list who you wanted to buy from. You went and bought off them. Yeah. But that's not what happened. That's, that's not true. The truth is we received, a, we received a, an email telling us exactly that. Here's a list of UK distributors. Da, 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 da. And then at the bottom of that email, one, one distributor to choose from. And the distributor is not UK, it's in the Netherlands. And they say that they're not forcing us to buy off that person. Well, who else is there that we can buy off then? Because there isn't anybody else, because you haven't told us about anybody else. So I hope that very quickly and very simply clarifies that little segment as to what that bit about is, it, 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 it is about. So, we then sort of go on to the unpackaged coins. Now, I will come back to this distributor bit because it does tie in again. So we come to the unpackaged coins. So, the Royal Mint sell unpackaged coins. Now, how I had to find this out was was a joke in itself. There's a video of me. If you go back, there's a video of me. You see, the thing is, I can't help the way that my mind works. My mind works in a way and I question things. I look at things and I go, well, well how does that work then? Well, if that and that and that, well, well, what's going on? How does that work? The two don't matter. If I don't see something that adds up, I call it out and I go, well, I'm sorry, I don't get it. And I want somebody to explain it to me. That's all I want. That's all I want is someone to explain it to me. Explain it to me in a way that I can understand. Once I've got it, I can move on. That's sort of, I can't help it, the way my mind works. So, videos ago, this video I did last year, and I'm going, and I'm saying on the video, I don't understand it. The Royal Mint say, because in a Freedom of Information request, I asked the Royal Mint, do you sell loose coin? And the Royal Mint told me that they don't sell loose coin. That was the Freedom of Information Department. Now, if you can't get the truth from the Freedom of Information Department, who can you get the truth from? So they told me that they didn't sell loose coin. So now, now it doesn't compute in my brain. It doesn't compute because how is it possible for Change Checker to sell the product for 3 99 that costs me six pounds to buy. How is that even possible? It can't happen. You know, and I, and I said this on the camera, it's like, I'm genuinely, I really don't know what is the crack here. Either they're buying loose coin, but the mint say they're not selling them loose coin, but either they're buying loose coin, I said at the time, or they're buying the Royal Mint packaged product, ripping it open, repackaging it and making a loss. Which don't really make sense, I said at the time. And I couldn't understand because the Royal Mint were adamant that they do not sell loose coin. Then I have a phone call with Chris Inson, head of legal, and this lady, where she slipped up in the conversation and mentioned actually they do sell loose coin to change checker. Now, of course, boom, there you go. Done. In a millisecond that took. 
So I understand now. Yeah, cool. Now I understand. I'm angry about it, but I understand. That's how they can sell it at that price because they're buying it loose. So I was right. I was right all along. They are buying it loose. But nobody would admit to selling it to them loose. How crazy is that? Then when I asked the Royal Mint, I want to buy loose coin too. I want to buy the same product that they buy. It's close to that price as I can get. Um, and compete with them. The Royal Mint told me, this is gospel truth, the Royal Mint told me again and again and again, they cannot, under the Data Protection Act, give me the details of their clients. Right, it's starting to rain, so I'm just going to put my umbrella up because my glasses are getting wet. So that's what they said. They can't give me the details of where I can buy the coin from because it's against data protection. Now, again, excuse me, I'm not picking a fight. I'm not picking a fight, but my mind needs to compute. It has to compute because if my mind doesn't compute, I'm wandering around aimlessly going, well, I don't understand. I don't understand how that's that then. And I can't. I have to understand how some things work. So imagine, imagine here is a distributor. Here is a real wholesaler that the Royal Mint say exists and I say it doesn't exist. You've made it up. This is the wholesalers, and the Royal Mint say that there is more than one person, more than change checker, more than another one person, there are businesses out there that they sell this loose coin to. So there are, we don't know how many, so let's say there are some of these, right? These people that I say don't exist, these people, these businesses that buy loose coin off the Royal Mint, there they are, right? Okay. Let's put it in the physical. There they are, there. So that, these, these businesses that buy the loose coin from the Royal Mint, what do these businesses do with that coin? Because we're led to believe, or I've been led to believe by the Royal Mint because it's what they've said, that these businesses resell those coin. And it's no business of the Mint's what, who they resell that coin to face of it that seems plausible right absolutely plausible nothing wrong with that okay except when you investigate it on the internet and please don't take my word for this anybody that doubts anything any word I've said please 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 I implore you to check it out for yourself I always say people don't take what I say as read go and check it out yourself because some of this stuff I'm talking about, this is stuff that can be easily verified by you sitting at your computer at home, on your phone. It can be it, any, any, any device you like, you can prove this to yourself, okay? If these people exist, these so-called businesses, if they exist and they buy and sell loose coin, where are they? Try and find one. You see if you can try and find, because I've spent two years, you see if you can try and find anywhere on the internet, anywhere in the world, on the entire planet, and that's a great thing about the internet, isn't it? It's a fun, before the internet, a company like the Royal Mint could spout a rubbish, terrible lying story like this, and you'd have to swallow it. There is no way on earth you could prove different. But the internet, you see, and these people that are running these businesses and spouting this stuff they're not clued up they're not clued up the way you the public are clued up they're clued up in their big conglomerate business world of their big conglomerate business meetings and and high-flying attitudes and and talk and all the rest of it they're not as savvy as what you are 
when it comes to the internet. Oh, they might be more savvy than you when it comes to the terms of business, more savvy than me when it comes to the terms of the law, and how you get around this, and how you get around that, and all the rest of it. Yeah. But they ain't as savvy as you when it comes to Google. They ain't as savvy as you when it comes to the real world. So you, you go and have a look. Don't take my word for it. Go and have a look. I challenge you to find a business out there that is wholesaling, loose, unpackaged, raw mint, 50p's and two pound coins, and five pound coins, and all the others, you know, 10 p's too. You find, you see if you can find one. And I'm telling you, it doesn't exist. Now, either I'm nothing but a crap stirring moron, who is running around shouting his mouth off over, over something that isn't true, or all of this stuff I've been saying has a ring of truth to it. And, and you don't have to take my word for it. You can just, some of this that I'm saying, you can just find out for yourself. So, the Royal Mint says these people exist. And then they say, oh yeah, but, but hang on, we can't give you their details because that's against data protection. Think about this. This is data protection being used, used by the Royal Mint to cover up. That's what it is. Because I'll tell you why that doesn't exist. That, 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 doesn't, that doesn't work. This person, if they exist, these businesses, and remember, we're talking about more than one. So all these businesses that I don't think exist, all these businesses, they make money in some way or other selling coin, right? Because they're buying this loose coin from the Royal Mint, the 10p's, the 50p's, the two pounds, five pounds. They're buying this from the Royal Mint and they're reselling it to their customers, whoever their customers are. Okay. So far, so good. If you was the boss or owned one of these said companies, now think about this very carefully. If you was one of these people that owned or run one of these companies and the boss, and you found out that the manufacturer that you're buying your, and this doesn't, remember this applies to anything, anything you like, potatoes, green, greens, anything, tins of beans, it don't matter. The distributor, a distributor, buying the product off of these people over there and investing all of the money that they're investing in this person's product to put that product into stock in their warehouses that they're going to pay rent for so that they can then redistribute that stock and send it all out to all their retailers and people that they buy it from okay data protection are we expected to believe that these people do not want the royal mint to give their details to people that inquire about where they can buy these coins from. Because what the Royal Mint is saying is that when somebody comes to the Royal Mint and says, I'd like to buy some of these loose bunts coins, please, non-packaged, how can I do that? The Royal Mint says, oh, we can't tell you where you can buy that from. That's against data protection. We can't tell you who these people are. That's against data protection. No, 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 no. How does that make any sense? How? Call it potatoes. Call it tins of beans. How does that make any sense? A retailer goes to the manufacturer and says, I want to buy your product and stock it in my shop and sell it. How can I buy your product? And the manufacturer says to that retailer, we're not going to tell you. Yeah, we do sell it to people, distributors and wholesalers, but we're not going to tell you who they are because that's against data protection. Can you see, have I, have I put that in layman's terms enough for you to be able to see what an absolute load of hogwash all of that is? They don't exist. So why not just be honest enough to say you don't exist? I called that out in that phone call. And I said to him, I haven't got a problem with you having a preferred retailer. That's not what this is about. I just want to buy the product. I think it's unfair 
but I haven't got a problem with you having a preferred retailer. What I've got a problem with is that you saying that these people are distributors when they're not and you giving them an, an illegal monopoly, which is wrong. And so they have blocked me at every opportunity. So the Royal Mint actually refused to tell me a single solitary UK distributor. They refused to tell me a single solitary distributor of loose bunts coin. And they refused to do that under the, under the Data Protection Act. And um, I'm 56 years old and I've been doing it the hard way all my life. I've met an awful lot of people and I just, you know, I recognise, I recognise waffle when I see it. I recognise a cover up when I see one. I recognise lies and deceit when I see one. And there is, doesn't make any sense. Where in all of this does any of what I've told you make any sense to continue those kinds of charades and those kinds of dodgy dealings? Where? It makes no sense. <sighs> Unless, as always, the one thing that comes out, always, 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 is when you look for the whys and wherefores, it suddenly comes down to that. That's what it comes down to. It comes down to the money. It comes down to the money that certain people are making and it comes down to the money that people are making that they shouldn't be making and that kind of thing. Okay, so now we come to an illegal monopoly. So if any of these people exist at all and the Royal Mint says they do and I have it in writing from the Royal Mint that they, these people exist, if these people exist in any way, shape or form, A, there's no reason to not tell me who they are, and B, those people, those businesses, those businesses will be angry at the Royal Mint for not giving me their details because they want to sell their product. Do you see? So, if these people actually exist, then there is no monopoly. What I'm saying is wrong. There only has to be one other business. One. Just one. Just one. That is in competition with Change Checker on the same product. Just one business. And then anybody can look at me and they can laugh and go, ha 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 ha, you're a knob because you got it wrong. Just one. And then there's no monopoly. As long as there's fair competition, there's no monopoly. There isn't any. And I defy you to find one. There isn't any. So that's where the monopoly comes in. What we have is we have a manufacturer that manufactures a product and gives it to one retailer, not a distributor, a retailer, and allows that retailer to make an obscene profit, undercutting everybody else, selling that item cheaper than anybody else. Now, on the one hand, you might be grateful for that. Yeah, that's fantastic, because if it weren't for Change Checker, we wouldn't be able to buy our coins at 3 99 Well, it's now 4 50 Yeah, you know, you've got the 4 50 plus you've got the 2 99 postage, which is a rip-off anyway, um, which I can tell you for a fact that they, Change Checker, are looking at. So there's something else that we're changing. All of this noise we're making has actually changed some, pardon me, has actually changed some things, you know? Um, I'm gonna digress now, but one of the things that it, 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 it changes is, no, I won't digress. Coming back to this, keep on tracking. So, we've got the monopoly, right? Created because you've got a manufacturer, manufacturing a product, selling it to a preferred retailer that no one else can buy. That is a monopoly. And as far as I'm aware, a monopoly under our law is illegal. Then you've got a cartel. A cartel's illegal. A cartel, and the de definition of a cartel, is when several businesses get together. Look the definition up yourself. Several businesses get together and they conspire to fix the price of a product. 
Well, that's what's happened in this case. You've got four businesses. You've got the Royal Mint, you've got Change Checker, you've got the Westminster Collection, and you've got 288 Group. Under the law, they are all separate businesses. Even though three of them are owned by the same people, under the law, they're all separate businesses. Therefore, four businesses have talked, which is conspired, four businesses have conspired to commit an illegal activity, which is a cartel, because the price is fixed. The price of the loose bunts coin is fixed, and it's fixed by Change Checker and the Royal Mint. There is nobody else involved in that. There is nobody else that has any say in that price. It is fixed. Four companies, one pro well, not one product, all of the products that they sell them, that, it, that they sell them loose, every single product that they sell loose. So we're talking thousands of products over time, thousands of different products and thousands of products. And all of these products are price fixed by those four companies, three of which are owned by each other. And not only that, 288 Group own a company, nothing to do with coins, they own a company that essentially is a babysitting company. And it's a babysitting company for the rich and famous and the politicians. <laughs> I wonder where that ties in. Royal Mint. Royal Mint needs certain politicians in their pocket. Change checker, 288 group, Westminster Collection. Babysitting group, nothing to do with coins. Babysitting group that has some kind of a connection. If we bend it over a little bit to the politicians that have the connection with the Royal Mint, that have the connection with Change Checker, that have the connection with Westminster Collection, that have the connection with the babysitting group, that goes back to the politicians. I didn't make that up. So then we come to a bit where some people honestly say, well, so what? So what? What difference does it make? Well, let me tell you some of the differences it makes. Now, I'm probably not allowed to buy from them, although I don't know 100%. But because of everything that I've said and because of everything that I've done, behind the scenes, the Royal Mint have been working frantically to try and sort this out because I've highlighted an area that they've dropped an almighty clanging wrong. And they've dropped an almighty clanger because they lied. Simple as that. If they hadn't lied, this wouldn't have blown up. The glasses are broken. But they did. And they covered it up instead of coming clean. And so, because of that, this has just got to ridiculous proportions now. It's got to the point where all sorts of skullduggery is going on. We've got a chap called Lee Holt, who's, uh, who, who's part of the Royal Mint, runs a Royal Mint swap shop group. You know, telling people that, that we owe thousands of customers. We've got thousands of customers that have lost their money and we've ripped thousands of people off. I mean, well, we're, he, we're, he's, he's running the Royal Mint page, so, you know, and all this stuff's going on with the Royal Mint. Oh, please don't ask me to think that it's not connected. Of course it's connected. It's all connected. The Royal Mint are not only allowing it to go on, they're encouraging it. Because they have to take the spotlight off of me. Off of them and put it on me. That's what's got to be done. Got to take the spotlight off of them and put it on me as much as possible because they've been caught with the fingers in the till, they've been caught with pulling strokes and illegal and criminal activity. And it's criminal and illegal activity that they actually didn't think about. That's the, actually, that's where they've got caught out. It's because they didn't think about it. These people, these few select people that are involved in these shady deals, they didn't think about the repercussions. And it's very difficult to think about the repercussions when all you see in front of your eyes are pound signs. Ching, 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 ching. It's difficult to actually get a grip and go, whoa, stop, I need to think sensible for a minute. Ching, 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 ching. No, 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 I need to think sensible for a minute. Wait a minute. That's not right. Ching, 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 ching. Oh, fuck it, let's do it. Let's just take the money. It's so easy. Greed can get hold of you so easily, and then it turns you into, sometimes it turns you into a bit of an idiot. I know, I've been there. And it can turn you into a bit of an idiot. 
and uh, and and, it, and it, this is why this is this is blowing up in in the ways that it's blown up it's not because i'm just going oh they're telling fibs oh they're this oh they're that everything i've spoken about is absolutely provable and it's not just provable by me to you or anybody else it's court of law whatever it's provable by you but by, by anybody just going out there and doing a bit of searching and listening to what i've been going on about and doing your own searching and having a look so you now have a monopoly and a cartel it's not legal and they're frantically trying to change it now apparently we've got a new uk distributor that's been added to the royal mint website but guess what the communications that i get from the mint in writing tell me that they cannot cannot divulge cannot divulge any, uh, any distributors because it's data protection. Funny how it's not against data protection to put all the other real distributors on their website. It's the ones that don't exist, it's against data protection to tell you who they are. But the ones that do exist, as you can see on the Royal Mint distribution web page, those ones, it's okay to put their links and their names and their companies up there. Of course it is because they exist. So now they've been frantically working behind the scenes and they have finally, finally sorted out a UK distributor. What does that mean? It means that for all the people out there that I spoke to yesterday, the same as the guy I spoke to yesterday on the phone, this guy that's been battling for three years, it means the likes of him and the likes of other, other yous that are into the retailing side of it and want to buy coins no longer have to go and buy your coins from the Netherlands. You can now buy some of your coins from the UK and that will save you an enormous amount of postage. So what? Well, if you follow that through, as the end customer, you people out there that are just the collectors out there, the price maybe comes down a little bit because the little men out there, the, the little men like me out there that are buying these products wholesale and retailing these products are suddenly buying it a fraction cheaper because they haven't got to buy the postage. So now they haven't got to pay as much postage. It's not costing them as much for the coins that they're buying. That has a direct knock-on effect to you. So if there's one thing that I've accomplished, it's forcing the Royal Mint to actually put a believable UK distributor on their website and stop all the untruths. So we've accomplished that. That's something we have accomplished. The next thing that we've accomplished is that Change Checker are actively looking at a way of being able to not be seen as a complete ripoff of their postage on eBay. They are looking into that. That is a direct result of what I've done, of these complaints. And that can only benefit you the end user now for me as a as a retailer in some ways it's advantageous to me to say to let them keep the swindling postage as it is but on the other hand it means that you the customers you, you don't know what you're doing you don't know where you are you're trying to figure out the prices you're trying to you're trying to work out well I'm trying to work out the price of that one, it's free post, and the price of that one's £1.50 post. The price of this one's, well, that's lower than that, but it's got 2 99 post. I mean, you know, where do you want that to end? You don't want that. No one wants that. You want to be able to go and look online and go, which is the best one for me? Uh, no, no, that's the cheapest one, thank you very much. Save time. You don't want all that nonsense trying to work out, well, I've got to work out what the cost of the item is, plus the cost of the postage got to work it out are there any other hidden costs that this retailer is going to charge you know years ago people on e the reason this is so big on ebay the reason this is such a big sticking point with change checker is because when ebay started for many years for at least 10 years maybe 15 years it went on and on and on and on and on that people would overcharge on the postage and have a low retail price so, for example, you'd sell something for a pound, but you'd charge £10 postage to get 11 quid. 
when it's maybe only costing you £2 postage. Do you see? And you might think, well, why would anybody do that? Well, the reason for doing that is because as a seller, you pay commission on the pound, but you, know, you don't pay any commission on the £10. So for years and years and years and years and years, sellers used to get around the system by going, right, we'll sell it at a low price, that way we give eBay a little tiny commission, and we sell the postage at a high price, which is where we've got the cost of our item, really, and that's our money, and we make extra money. And this crooked way of behaviour went on and on and on and on and on. And eBay is probably one of the only things I will say to eBay's credit. I don't often compliment eBay because I have my own issues with them. But to eBay's credit, they stamped on it and they eradicated it. Unfortunately, the way they eradicated it was to simply pass the cost onto every single seller. So what they did was, they essentially said, and I'll put it to you in layman's terms, eBay essentially come forward one day and went, enough's enough, no more, no more. From now on, you charge what you like for the retail price, you charge what you like for the postage. We're gonna charge you the 10% or whatever it is on the retail price, and we're gonna charge you the same 10% on the postage. So if you think you're gonna circumvent the eBay fees anymore, no you're not. Enough is enough is enough. But this is now gonna to apply to everybody. So this is gonna penalize every single seller out there. And at the same time, it'll also penalize the private sellers because we'll charge them commission on the postage too. They never used to charge commission on the postage. They only did that because people were pulling strokes like change checker going on there, selling an item at a low price, and then charging a ridiculous, exorbitant postage on top. 2 99 for a 50p postage is absolutely ludicrous. Ludicrous. Considering you can send a large signed for, for, you know, two quid, whatever. So, three quid postage, but change checkers say, oh, our people have to... We have to pay for people to wrap and pack and we've got to pay for staff and we've got to do this and we've got to do that. Yeah, get that. But that's how we all used to do it 20 years ago on eBay. And even at that time, you had even an option to add more money to the cost of the postage because they had an insurance option. So you could add £2 insurance. So if you wanted to add more money to the postage, you don't have to tell the customer. You just When you come to do the checkout, you just say, oh, it's £2 insurance. And they stopped it all because it was a rip-off and it was a con. And people don't know where they stand. People hate it. The buyers hated it. Now, eBay doesn't care. And it doesn't care that the buyers hate it. it they don't care. And they don't care that the sellers hate it because they just solved the problem in one. You're not going to play the game. You're not going to play the game fair. You're not going to play the game we want you to play the game. So what we're going to do is we're just going to charge you for it. So yeah, go and charge your low price on your item and your high price on your postage, and we'll just charge you commission on both. How do you like them apples? And that's the way it is now. That's exactly the way it is now, and every one of you have to pay commission on your postage, purely and simply because of these people. So to be able to get to a position where I can say to you, they are actively looking at that from the noise that I've made, then that's a good thing. That's a good thing for you because it brings the prices down on eBay. Or, if it doesn't bring the price down, it at least you know, lets you know where they stand. If they added the purchase price to the cost of the coin, seven and a half quid a coin, you know where you stand. You know, but it won't be that. If they deal with it, suddenly there'll be like money off there somewhere, which just goes to show it's just been a rip-off postage in the first place. And that's, just, that's not me knocking a competitor. That's me saying the way that it is from the way that they are running their business practices. And it's not right. So I do feel that, um, that through it all, we can claim responsibility for the fact that they're starting to change their practices and they're starting to change their practices in a, in a better way. It's just a shame that everything has to be so cloak and dagger when, when there's no need for it to be. And then there's, you know, there's other little things like um, stop takes and the, the down at the Royal Mint and suddenly, you know, loads and loads and loads of hundreds and hundreds of snowmen went missing. Just went missing. You know, well, I guess if something went missing from my place, I could understand it a bit. Sometimes I'm a little bit disorganised. 
and I'm sure you could probably get that. You know, you could probably understand that things things happen and one thing and another. But we are talking about the Royal Mint here, aren't we? We're talking about the Royal Mint, which is like Fort Knox. So, how do hundreds or thousands of a product go missing? Just, just, just vanish in the thin air. Just go missing. You know. And then when you sort of look deeper into it, and again, this is not about me knocking a competitor. It doesn't matter who that com that person is. But when you look deep into it, you find out that like, you know, the, the order for snowman wasn't wasn't interrupted for the for change checker for 288 group. They got their snowman. But there were people like me, we didn't get ours. You know, you know, read into that what you like, but I know how I feel about that, and I know how some of the other dealers feel about that, and, and they're not very happy. And I think they've got a right not to be happy. And unfortunately, it's that kind of blatant discrimination and blatant looking after a favoured retailer and blocking everybody else that sort of caused a lot of this trouble. So I really, really hope that, that what I've said, even though I have waffled on a bit, as usual, um, I really hope what I've said has explained it. You know, I'm not just a disgruntled person picking a fight with the mint. All of these things that I've talked about have happened. Everything is documented as much as it can be. I have all the evidence that I have in writing to back up everything that I'm saying that they've put in writing and so on. Um, and so, so sort of that's where we end up. So I feel we can take responsibility for a couple of positive things. You know, getting them to add a UK distributor, getting Change Checker to look at their postage pricing, um, getting them to look at, at how they can effectively uh, wholesale or something. See, at the moment, on the Change Checker website and the Westminster Collection website, you can only buy a maximum of three or six or nine. And for two years, Change Checker went on to went on when Change Checker went to eBay two years ago for two and a half years ago. For two years, um, you could buy as much as you wanted of them, and we proved that. We bought thousands of stuff off them, and yet the customers that had been there for like twenty years with them through Westminster and then into Change Checker that have been loyal to them, these people, these people don't know they're going on eBay and just opening up the market to everybody and letting everybody take as many as they want. These people are just still being served their maximum six, maximum nine. I think that's a little bit off, you know. And so because of us, Change Checker changed the parameters on eBay. And on eBay, um, you can only buy now a maximum of 50 items every 10 days off of Change Checker, maximum 50 items. So if you're a dealer and you want to buy more than 50 items, then all you've got to do is just manipulate it the same way they're manipulating it. They're manipulating the eBay marketplace to suit themselves, you know, and what you need to do as, a, as an individu individual independent retailer and dealer is you need to manipulate that same marketplace um, against them. You know, when somebody punches you, you punch back. Um, so, so they manipulate the marketplace so that they make all the money. And, and the reason for all of this, by the way, is purely and simply because Change Checker don't, 28 Group, all of those groups, Westminster, they're all the same people, they don't want wholesale business. They don't want wholesale email addresses. They want individual retail email addresses. See you later, mate. I'm just saying bye-bye. They want individual email addresses because they want to hard sell. It's all aggressive marketing campaign. Remember, you know, it, it, Change Checker came from Westminster Collection. Westminster Collection has been around 20, 25 years. And they, they do the aggressive marketing campaigns. That's what they always did for all that time in the back of Sunday newspapers and one thing and another. You know. Anyway. I digress. See, where was I? Yeah, so their business model is all about collecting individual email addresses to continually hard sell and sell to those individual email addresses. Which are, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, nothing wrong with that at all. That's, that's what they're doing. 
So in that sense, nothing wrong with collecting email addresses. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the hard sell or whatever. I'm just saying that's what they're about. They don't want to be wholesaling. They want to be retailing, all the time retailing. So the only way that you can you can get around that, if you're a dealer, if you're a small dealer and you still want that product, because again, you know, you can't buy the product from anyone else, anywhere else, anywhere on the planet, anywhere in the world, you cannot buy that product. It is the cheapest. When Change Checker put that product on eBay and released that product at 450 now for the put the price up, it was 399, but it's 450 now. When they put the when they put that item on, it is the cheapest item in the world. So you as a dealer, you want to buy that item, and you can't. You can't because they won't sell it, and they will they will manipulate it every way they can to stop you buying in bulk. Stop you buying in bulk. I mean, have you ever heard of such a thing? A retailer to stop people buying in bulk. They just do not want it. And here's the thing. If they don't if they don't allow you to buy in bulk, then their product stays on the eBay marketplace for longer, a lot longer at that low price. So you as an individual dealer or a little cottage industry person, you can't make any money on that product until they've sold out. They've got to sell out before you can make money on the product. And you can't help them sell out by buying more of the product because they won't allow you to buy the product or more of the product. So you have to get a bit creative. Now the eBay rules say that you're allowed to own as many as many eBay accounts as you want. You can have one eBay account, you can have a hundred eBay accounts. eBay will let you have as many eBay accounts as you want. It in their, it's in their rules, plain and simple. I won't go into the reasons why, because that's lengthy, I've covered that in another video, but there are no restrictions and still are, as far as I'm aware, although restrictions and rules change at any moment, but up till now, as far as I'm aware, it is still perfectly within eBay's rules and policies to open up more than one account. So, Change Checker want to play the silly game of stopping you buying their product, stopping you buying too much of their product. You need to step up the ante and go, well, okay, what I'll do is I'll just open up a few more eBay accounts. I want to buy 500 of the product. I can't buy 500 of the product, so I'll open up 10 eBay accounts and I'll buy 50 of the product on each account and I'll still buy 500 of the product. That's the same kind of games that you are involved in right now. And again, this is not me just spouting off against a competitor because every single dealer out there, every single person that makes any kind of money out of these coins knows exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about because you've come up against this problem time and time again and you've come up against these restrictions. I'm telling you how you can get around these restrictions while I'm talking about this in this video. You get around those restrictions by opening more and more and more and more eBay accounts. Just open buying accounts. Just buying accounts. You don't want to sell on those accounts, you just want different buying accounts. You don't care what the username is, it doesn't make any difference. It can be a bunch of letters. The one that eBay gives you, it doesn't matter open another 10 eBay accounts and then you can buy 500 every items every 10 days. Open 20 eBay accounts and you can buy 1,000 items every 10 days. Open 40 eBay accounts and you can buy 2,000 items every 10 days. That's the way you have to do it because that's the games that these people are playing. And tell me that that is fair in any kind of a way. The Royal Mint say in writing that when they sell the coin to Change Checker or Westminster or 288, whatever, when they sell the coin to them, it's up to them what they do with it. When you approach Change Checker, Change Checker say, oh, we're not geared up to sell it to your wholesale. And we can't, and because of the mint, and blah, 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 blah. So the two of them like that, blame each other. Meanwhile, time goes on. And the more time goes on, and this doesn't get resolved, the more money is being made by the people controlling this cartel and this monopoly. They are making all of the money. Last year, from my understanding, I don't know if this is 100% correct, but I believe last year, uh, Change Checker bought some 350,000 loose coins off of um, the Royal Mint. And 
uh, that's a lot of coin. That's a lot of profit. And people also say, mistakenly, that I'm disgruntled because eBay uh, Change Checker came onto the eBay marketplace and took our business. Um, I am disgruntled, like any dealer would be. I am disgruntled at that. Now, whilst I say on the one hand there's business for everybody, when it comes to the likes of you and me, no matter how small you are, tiny, 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 tiny little stay-at-home mum selling four or five coins a month just for a little bit of pocket money, or whether you're a cottage industry or whether you're somebody like me or whatever. Whoever you are, there is room for us all, all of us. Because the way the marketplace is designed, it can't be anything else but okay for all of us. It's a worldwide marketplace. A company comes on, they come on like a bulldozer with a great big wrecking ball behind them and they come charging into that marketplace, charging this really low price with this wrecking ball behind them and smashing to smithereens all those little dealers because they've come on to take all the business. Now, whilst I say that there is business for all, there is still only a finite number of collectors out there. There's only a finite num amount of business. It's not an infinite number. It becomes an infinite number only if you go down the road of thinking that every year millions and millions of more people are becoming coin collectors throughout the world. Then it, you know, the, the number starts to become more infinite a bull, if that's the right word. So there's like a finite number of collectors out there. So when, he, when, when, when Change Checker came onto the eBay marketplace, backed up by the Royal Mint, with a product so cheap that nobody else could touch them, and they charged on, all of the sales poof, went to them, like, like, like a swarm of flies. All the collectors, all the customers out of went pshoom, and dived on Change Checker because there's the product at the cheapest possible price. So that took a lot of business from a lot of people. It took a lot of business from me. It took a lot of business from a lot, a lot of you out there. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And, um, and that's not nice business practices. That's, that's aggressive, nasty marketing backed up by if you like, an illegal monopoly, cartel, and a product that is infinite in itself. Because whilst you're waiting for them to sell out so that you can sell your product, they don't sell out if the product keeps selling. Because if the product keeps selling, the mint keep making. So anyway, I hope that explains that. And then I'd like, I would like to address the puzzle act issue. I know this is going on and on and on, but I would like to address the puddle duck issue, being as it's all in one, and being this video is to try and explain to people what on earth this is all about. So the puddle duck issue. So in, this is my understanding, and again, I don't know if I'm 100% correct, but I'm actually not stating this as fact. I'm saying I'm not sure if this is 100% correct, but in my understanding, in 1967, which was the last year that they made the big round penny, the Royal Mint went to the government and said, we think that loads of people are going to buy this, buy this and stick it in their loft. And again, I'm giving it to you in layman's terms the way I understand it. So we think there's going to be an enormous demand for the very last English big penny. Now's our chance. Sell loads. So what we'd like to do, government, is we'd like to carry on minting that penny into 1968. But we want to still keep a 1967 date on it. And the people at the government got together and there was some kind of special dispensation, stroke law, whatever it was. Again, I don't profess to understand it all. But there was something drawn up that allowed them in to do that. And the Royal Mint carried on making the 1967 penny into 1968 because people kept buying it. Now that, you're going to go, 
Well, what's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely right. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that at all. The reason I say there's nothing wrong with that is because to me, due process seems to have been served. Right? Someone's had the idea, they've thought this was a brilliant idea, but they can't do it, just go off and do it off their bat. So they've got to do it properly. So they go to the government, they talk to people at the government. These people have meetings. No doubt there's meetings after meetings after meetings. Paperwork is drawn up. Contracts, all this stuff goes on. And then they get to a final thing and they go, yes, you can do that. I think that entire process, if you like, sums up the kind of democracy, if you like, that our country is supposed to be about. That transaction right there. Didn't go off and do it just off your own bat. You didn't just decide you want to do it and go off and do it. You, you, you did due diligence. You sought proper authority. You crossed the T's and dot the I's. And it was all done properly. In 2016, I just got to let my dog out. Sorry. So in 2016, they released the five Bidrix pot of coins. The one with the lowest mintage was the Puddle Duck. And Change Checker had lots and lots and lots of these. Change Checker is at something like 100,000. 100,000, right? And that's probably where on the Royal Mint's website there is apparently supposed to be some kind of disclaimer saying because of because of unusual high demand they minted an extra hundred thousand all for change checker they don't tell you that but it was all for change checker so they sold out sold out all of a sudden they got none and that went on for quite a while they had none they had none they had none they had none and the price went up and the price went up. Now the eBay marketplace is taking care of itself, right? Now it's doing its thing. It's doing what it does. Yeah? The product is now sold out. The people that do have the product are trading in that product, which is what the eBay marketplace is all about. And the product is increasing in value because the product is more and more sought after. More and more people wanted the puddle duck. More and more people bought into the hype that was caused by the Royal Mint. They bought into that hype, they went out, they wanted it, and they started trading in it. And someone at the mint thought, ooh, we have a little opportunity here. Yes, I know. What we'll do is we'll make some more. So they did. And... I found out that they'd reminted them. <coughs> Pardon me. I thought in 2018. I was outraged, as I'm sure an awful lot of collectors would be. Totally outraged. You cannot bake that backdate a coin because you come into the realms of that old thing about where do you draw the line. You know, that question, if you come into the realms of these questions, you have to come up with that thing, that other question of, where do you draw the line then? If it's okay to backdate a coin, is it okay to backdate the Kew Gardens? Is it okay the 2009 that sells for 100 quid? Is it okay to backdate the 1933 penny and make another big penny? Exactly the same, absolutely the same, no distinction whatsoever with the 1933 penny with a 1933 date on it. Would that be okay? Would it be okay if the Royal Mail remade the penny black, but remade the penny black exactly 100% exactly the same as the original penny black and then sold it for a penny? Would that be okay? Because the moment that happens, you've just destroyed the value of all those people that have put money into the penny blacks all over the world. Right? I think a penny black's worth about 14 grand, isn't it? 10 to 14 grand, something like that. So, if the, if the, if the Royal Mail did that, immediately, immediately, all these people that have got these stamps worth 10 to 15 grand, all of a sudden these stamps are worth a penny. Because they've just made a load more and you can't tell the difference. It, it wouldn't be allowed. There'd be a, there would be a public outcry. But the Royal Mint reminted them in 2018 and sold them all 
to change to, to our group. Sold them all to them. Didn't give anybody else a look in. Nobody else had a chance. All to them. Within the monopoly, all to them. At a fixed price within the cartel, all to them. I think that's a little bit outrageous, to be honest. So when I question the Mint about this, I get a letter back from the Mint, and the Mint, the Royal Mint tell me, in writing, I have this, I hasten to add, in writing, which, made, which infuriated me even more, was what they said in writing was, we made them in 2016 through to 2018. I looked at that letter, I went, through to? Through to? Well, that means, 17 as well. So you've, you've minted the coin in 2016, you've minted it in 2017, and you've minted it in 2018, and you backdated both of those years to 2016. That is the most outrageous thing you can have in the coin community. And because it was backdated to 2016, and therefore these 100,000 coins that were then shipped to Change Checker on the quiet with a deal done under the table, Change Checker then put those coins up for sale at £3.99 at a time when the market, the eBay market I was talking about a little while ago, that suddenly started taking care of itself after it was all sold out, that market had gone up to 10, 12 quid per coin. People were investing 8, 10, 12 quid for, to that coin because they knew that that coin would still go up in value. Right? 100,000 coins or something like that. I don't know exactly what the figure is. Go from the Royal Mint Extra to Change Checker to go on the market, on eBay, on the public marketplace, not even on their own website. They haven't even, didn't even sub subtly do it on their own website. No, straight in there like a bull in a china shop. Whee. What did that do? Decimated. It instantly decimated the puddled up market. That market that was taking care of itself, <laughs> fizzled, gone. For a while, only when they sold out that 100,000, only then did the market start to pick up again. Slowly, really, really slowly, but it started to pick up again. And now that market is up to, I think uh, at this time, the Puddle Duck is up to around about 10 to 15 quid or something like that. <laughs> That's where it was two years ago. Three years ago, two years ago. So that was a lot of damage. And that damage was done for no other reason whatsoever than greed. It was greed. It was nothing else but greed. And these are the things that I've been rambling on about. These are the things that I've been talking about. These are all the things that I've been uh, bleating about and so on in my own little way whilst trying to run a business. And, you know, this thing about what we're doing with the Peter Rabbit, etc. I'm trying so hard. I'm really trying so hard not to let the issues with the Royal Mint disturb or mar the opportunity that there is for this great british coin hunt and the peter rabbit 2019 to actually pick up its momentum like it is doing and to roll on and it could really easily be damaged because of the stuff that i've been saying about the mint and change checker and i really do get that and it is such a dichotomy it is such a worry but i have to take the view that i've got me my staff my investors my customers all to think about I have to think about the long-term view. I have to think about the long-term view. I can't just think about the short-term view. I must think about the long-term view. And the long-term view says, I have to keep this going. I have to continue the momentum with the Peter Rabbit 2019 because that is, even if I say so myself, and I'm not being big I promise, but, or arrogant, but it's got to be one of the best marketing ideas I've ever had. And Ian Glenn of Change Checker himself said to me on the phone, he said he wished that he'd thought of it. Or he'd thought of doing something like that, but he didn't know how to do it. And when I told him that, just simply ask your customers, you can trust them, they trust you, why not trust them? 
Took him a while to get his head around that. You know. So it is really important to me to, to try not to let what's happening with the Peter Rabbit 2019 be interfered with in any way or marred in any way with what's going on with the Royal Mint and Change Checker and so on. And I've, I've often said it, having talked to Ian Glenn, the boss of 288 Group and Change Checker, and having met him, um, I somehow don't, I somehow don't believe that a lot of this is actually caused by Change Checker, which might sound a bit weird after everything that I've said, but there's a part of me that doesn't believe, you know, again, I look at things and I think, yeah, this doesn't add up and that doesn't add up. And well, if you was doing that, you'd be doing that. And, you know, there are things that don't add up as to how this is all come about. And I just, I'm finding it difficult to believe that Ian Glenn and Change Checker and these people over at 288 Group have specifically on purpose set it up to be this way. I just think that they've all fallen into a bit of a trap and, and they've now got to look at how they get out of that trap because they are caught in a monopoly and a cartel and no one can deny that. Um, anyway, so I then... I, I, I'd had a moan a few times and uh, I did a video and I put it out to my customers and I said to them one day, do you know what, look, uh, I think we need to sort of put this to bed, you know, I've been ill and all that. Um, I think we need to sort of, what should we do? So I said, I'll put it over to you. I've created a listing, I've made it 25 quid a go, something like that. Um, the link to that is in the description of this video. Um, and if you want to, uh, and I said to the customers, if you want me to take this further, if you think I'm right, if you think I'm barking up the wrong tree and I'm talking a load of, you know, I'm off me, I'm off me cake or something, then, you know, don't, don't buy anything. If you think, agree with me, if you think I'm right, if you think you want me to take this forward and put into it and let's see what happens, because if we go into a legal fight with the Royal Mint, we're going to need at least probably... Uh, we're going to need 15 grand to start it off and it's probably go up to like 30 grand or whatever. So I put it out to the customers and I expected, and I said, whatever happens, I'll take that as a message. Obviously, if nobody buys into it, that's a clear message to say, Ian, shut up, you know, you, you move on. And it didn't happen that way. You know, six grand came in within a fortnight. So people out there do believe what I'm saying and some of these people that have put into that fund have experienced a lot of what I'm saying. They know it to be true. They know that this is all going on, but it's all going on so secretly that it is so difficult. It's like it's like the world's best kept the world's best kept open secret. You know, all the dealers out there know this is all going on. We all know this is all going on. The mint knows all this. <laughs> Everybody knows all this is going on, but nobody really talks about it. It's one of those. It's like a little dirty secret. Nobody really talks about it. One of those dirty secrets in the family. Nobody really talks about it. And that's what it's ended up like. And it's time to go, no, let's just uh, let's just bring this out in the open because this is not helping the coin collecting community one little bit. You know, I know I'm not any kind of uh, um, any kind of authority on the coin collecting community, not by a long chalk. You know, um, there are people out there that have knowledge but I've come into this from a buying and selling point of view. I've come into this to make a living, to run a business. And I don't like it when things are specifically designed to prevent me doing that business. It doesn't matter that this is coins. It could be gardening. I'd still be making a fuss if somebody was preventing me running my business to the best of my ability. And that's what's happening here. And costing me money, and that's what's happening here. And costing other people money, and that's what's happening here. So, I hope that, I really, really hope that helps. I really, really hope that it, it doesn't, I really hope it doesn't put people off what's going on with the Peter Rabbit, because these issues are going on, they have to be dealt with, someone's got to deal with it, just happens to be me. But at the same time, I really, really, really want this Peter Rabbit 2019 thing to work. We're now in more than 25 newspapers. Um, 
we are we are being picked up left, right and centre. There's there's people wanting to get behind it. There's there's journalists getting in touch, wanting to take photographs of people putting in the coins. This is not a bad thing for the coin collecting community. Whatever you might think about me and whatever you might think about the way that I deal with things, this really isn't a bad thing for the coin collecting community. It's a good thing. And it is a good way to get good, honest publicity. I could have put £3,000 into a newspaper advert and got a front, got, 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 and got a full page in the Daily Star. I'd have got, well, I'd have probably got four full pages in the Daily Star for three grand. But anyway, you pay an advert. Who's going to have that money? The Daily Star or whoever I give that money to, the radio, whatever. And I just thought, no, let's have, our, you know, give it to the people. The money for the publicity, give it to the people. They will help you more than any advert in any newspaper. And I've been proved to be right. And my, my most touching story so far is the one where somebody's taken one of those 50p's and they've, and they've put it into a, a machine in a supermarket and they added some money and they bought four cans of soup and they put those four cans of soup into a trolley for the, for the people that have got poverty and, and um, um, the food bank. And I just think that's an amazing gesture, you know. So, um, and I, for one, don't take customers lightly. I don't take that kind of thing lightly. Big business does. Big business doesn't care. They do not give a monkeys. They go and do something nice. They go and do something nice for a big major charity. No, no, no. This has been lovely. So uh, that's it. Thanks very much. And um, if it's if if you were erring on the of helping with the Peter Rabbit. I really hope this hasn't tipped you over into the no. I hope it's tipped you over into the yes. Because that's the only reason I've done it. That's the only reason I've done it. Thank you very much. This has been Ian, www.thegreatbritishcoinhunt.com and there is a link in the description to our fund for suing the Royal Mint if you want to join in. Uh, I think it's priced from a pound or something. And what we promise people is, if we win, you'll get three times your money back. If we lose, you'll get three times your money back in points that you can use on product. Either way, you can't lose. Plus, you get 20% back in points if you pass my bank account on anything that you put into it. So it's, uh, you know, if you want to join in with it, please do. And uh, the more money that we collect, the more confident that makes us because that's more guns in our arsenal. If we get to the point of collecting 50 grand, then we know we can go all the way. So there you go. Uh, but we don't want it to get that far because I've been asking and asking and asking the Royal Mint for a sit down so many times, but they won't have anything to do with us. Even to the point of, for two years, trying to get the details of a UK distributor and they go and put one on their website and they don't even tell us. So um, anyway, enough. Thank you very much indeed and uh, have a lovely evening.